and welcome to New Earth Lifestyles. I'm Janie King, your host of the show. Let me have a little gong on that and we can breathe. Ah. Thank you for joining me today. We're in downtown Manchester, New Hampshire, April, no, today's May 22, 2014. Thank you, John, for getting me set up today. John Eric O'Neill and Manchester Public TV, manchestertv.org for this wonderful space and this community access op opportunity for New Earth Lifestyles to come to you out there in, uh, in the TV world or the internet world, wherever you're watching. Thanks for being with us. And this is a show about shifting consciousness and giving you new opportunities or opportunities to look at things from a new perspective and new direction. And today, uh, my guest will be calling in from uh, Boulder, Colorado, and she's a colleague of mine from the Barbara Brennan School of Healing, and her name is Isabel Tierney. She's a, a therapist and a healer and has a beautiful website, isabeltierney.com. So Isabel will be calling in momentarily until she does. Um, thank you for joining me today, and remember, your heart knows the way. We'll be talking today about... Um, um, let's see, her, her um, focus now is dare to be you, dare to be you. Isn't that a great subject? Because that's exactly what New Earth Lifestyles is all about. Dare to be you. Who are you, as we ask many times, and why are you here? But knowing who am I, who am I, is a, really a huge question to ask and in, important for us to ponder ponder not only once in a while, but to actually question often until you come to that place of knowing yourself on, on a deeper level and acting from that knowing so that you can be happy in your life and you can enjoy this moment that we have right now, this present moment, which is all we have really. The past is, is gone and the present and the future is not here. So ah, that's the important moment right here right now so when Isabel calls in we have I have a lot of questions for her and uh, she uh, as I say is a licensed massage um, Mari I'm sorry <laughs> marriage and family therapist I will have a little gong on that little faux pas <laughs> keep us light and having fun enjoying even though it's raining today it was pouring on my way down here from New London and it, of course it let up a little bit on when I got here to Manchester but the rain is a good thing. I'm hoping it rains a lot now between now and Friday, tomorrow, and then the weekend, hopefully, with Memorial Day weekend coming up will be lovely, nice, bright, clear weather. That's my hope. I'm going over to the ocean for the weekend, and I always like it to be sunny and warm, as we all do. But whatever, we'll take what we get. We'll take what we get. So, okay, thank you very much. Hello. Good morning, good afternoon. Is this Isabel? I guess it didn't come in right away, did I? Um, try again. Okay. They'll try again. They'll try again, yes. They'll try again. Hopefully that was Isabel. She'll try back. To call back Isabel. So Isabel and I go back uh, to 1996 and the Barbara Brennan School of Healing, and we'll probably discuss some of that when she calls in. Uh, talking about healer, the healing school that we went to. Yeah, that's it. Go ahead. Okay. Hello, you're on the air. Hi, Jane. This is Isabel Tierney. Isabel Tierney. Yahoo! Thank you for calling. Yahoo! <laughs> you are I'm so on the excited air. to be uh, conversing with you. I am too. It's been so long. I'm, I, I was trying to think how long, but I was just talking back to t telling the audience that, that we met in 1996. We did. Long time ago, doesn't it feel? <laughs> it feels like in a couple of years it'll be, it'll be uh, 20, 20 years ago. Oh, my gosh. No. Well, look, I, I don't want to go back that far, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's funny. I think about my son, who's just graduating from high school this weekend, was eight months old that first week that uh, I went to school. And I always remember feeling like such a bad mom that I was leaving him for a week. Oh, my god! I was very, very terrified that I was going to mess him up really badly. <laughs> that must have been difficult. I remember you had two small children. 
Yeah, at that point, well, I had three. I had two that were like two and four, oh. and then Gabriel was was eight months old. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, you had exactly. three. Wow. <laughs> and at high school, your youngest is leaving high school now. Well, yeah, and my oldest graduated college last week, so it's so wow. crazy. <laughs> you know, I, I always hate the story when people say that, you know, at the beginning, time goes really slow with kids, and then it goes really fast, but it's actually true. It's it's uh, it's really fast. Really fast. Well, life in general, I think, is really fast, but yeah, you, you kids grow up so quickly. You think they're just babies, and, and boom, out of high school and out of college. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Wow. So you have a your your website is called Dare to Be You, and that is fascinating. What does that mean? You know, it's interesting because um, as you know, for so many of us who are healers or therapists, we have. To me, I feel like I've had so many kind of incarnations of Isabel, you know, with all these different creative projects that I've created. And so it was a little bit confusing for people, you know, because I had the body beloved way and then I had the feel good way. And I think my, the first name of my first practice was called even the Healing Chrysalis. Oh. And a few months ago, I was putting together this podcast that I've just started and we were trying to come up with names for it. And the name Dare to Be You came up because I really wanted to just talk to people people who were willing to be transparent and to be open and to be themselves, right? No matter what, because those are the people that generally resonate with the best. And as I came up with a name for the podcast, I thought, wait a minute, that is actually kind of the name of everything I've done throughout this lifetime. You know, we were born and we're ourselves. And then as we grow up, our parents and our environment and society tells us, well, you can be this, this is good, but you can't be that, right? You can be a good girl, but you can't be an angry girl, for example. And so we learn to put on these masks that to me, that's what created my eating disorder and that's what created my depression and that's what, Mm. what created so many of my wounds and of my obstacles and that over the last what 10 15 20 years the process has been about letting go of these masks and learning to dare to be me which is actually really hard to do because Mm. because we want people to like us so much and right. it's such a primary need of all of ours yeah. but when we dare to be ourselves we really can't guarantee that ah. but you know in the end it's the only freeing thing that we can do wow that's amazing that's so powerful i can feel i can feel the authenticity and power in all that isabel that's great well thanks jane <laughs> i love that yeah, yeah because i mean think about it for yourself right like well i am when yeah you when we try to make ourselves smaller than who we are, when we reject this part of us and this part of us and this part of us, we kind of become shells of our former selves. And and then the funny thing is, in the end, nobody really likes us like that anyway. That's it's not right. like we're guaranteeing being liked when we're just <laughs> tiny pieces of ourselves. I think people smell it when we're not ourselves. I think that's very true. That's very true. Um, and I'm I feel that the more authentic and... Uh, daring to be myself that I am as far in fact this television show has brought me to that place of I have to be myself now the sort of a, the same place where you are just have to let out who I am whether they like it or not because I do ha- I have to like me and that's the most important person in my life right exactly and you know I did this uh, workshop in December with this guy his name is Steve, Pav- Steve Pavlina and he's got Oh, I don't know. It's like a million followers on his blog. It's some insanely huge amount. And his thing is about being himself. And he talks about only wanting to have tens and ones. You know, he says, well, you can live being liked like at a seven or eight. You know, people kind of like you and they kind of follow you. Or if you're really yourself, then either people really like you or they really don't. And so he has just challenged himself to just be himself and not really care. You know, some people will love him and some people really hate him. Mm -hmm. And it was so 
liberating to hear him because I realized that I was, the way I was writing, the way I was showing up in my life, I was authentic, right? I'm always kind of known for that, but I was just kind of authentic. I, <laughs> there were pieces of me that I was like, well, maybe I shouldn't share that, especially, you know, as healers and therapists, mm-hmm. you know, we're supposed to have it so much together. Right. And so when I launched the Dare to Be You, you know, brand, I, I actually, my newsletter was five things I don't want you to know about me. And that was my <laughs> launchy newsletter. And, I, I, and I, I shared five things that I was really not wanting people to know about me. And wow. it was such a liberation because uh. I don't know if some people hated it. They didn't write about it. The people who loved it loved it and said it gave them permission <gasps> That's to be the themselves. That's exactly true. When you tell people who you truly are, I love that you gave people five things that, what was it, five things that um, you didn't like about yourself or um, but that is so, so right on because uh, it gives it does give people permission to be who they are and to recognize in you parts of themselves, and that is so yeah. validating for the world. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting actually because I was just reading, you know, the famous, famous Marion Williamson poem, and she talks about, you know, how we're scared to shine our light, but yet when we shine our light, we give permissions to others to shine their light. So to me, that's one thing, and under the tagline of dare to be you it says the sacred and messy art of being human (laughs) and for me that's what i've always loved like yes we are sacred right yes we're incredible yes we have this incredible light but we're also really messy and chaotic and impulsive and we make mistakes and we struggle with alcoholism or eating disorders and so for me, the daring to be me or dare, you know, inviting people to daring to be themselves is to actually give themselves permission to own the light and the shadow. Because to me, and I think, you know, you have the same thing coming from the Barbara Brandon world. Do you remember that? <laughs> she said something that always stuck with me. She said, we haven't fully done our work till we've owned the Hitler inside of us. That's and by right. that, she meant the darkest of the dark. Right. Because if we are one, then of course we have Mother Teresa Teresa inside of us, and we have Hitler inside of us. The question is, how do we relate to these parts of us? Absolutely. I do remember that, and that that has been a thread of my growth um, since Barbara Brennan's School of Healing was recognizing that and how to embrace the shadow part, that, yeah. hit, that Hitler part, that part that you don't want to see, but it raises its head when you get have these emotional reactions or uh, interactions with relationships that, that trigger you know, that Hitler to come out or that rage or whatever it happens to be. That's right. That's right. And when we reject it and when we push it away and when we don't want to own it, what happens is it goes underground and Mm. then, like you said, raises its ugly head when we least expect it and becomes really destructive. And, you know, when we, you know, the worst thing that I said out of the five things I didn't want people to know about me, the most difficult one was my feeling of competitiveness with successful people. And, you know, it's so interesting because it is such a shadow piece, especially for women. You know, we're supposed to all love and support each other. But actually what I see is that there is a lot of competition and a lot of it is kept underground. And when I stated that, that was probably what got the most feedback out of those five things. People saying, oh, thank God you named it because I'm so ashamed about feeling that. (sighs) And it's, you know, if we normalize it, it stops having that much power over us. Exactly. That is so powerful what you're saying. It gives people the verbiage or the, the words to express what they're understanding about themselves, that they're, they're, it, may be, um, it may be way down below somewhere that they don't really actually realize. But when you, when you uh, own it as something you don't want people to know about you, it does give people permission to search and also maybe align with, oh, that's true. I, I have some of that in me. But yeah, that's yeah right. but it's underneath. That's right. Because you know what we do instead when we don't own it is we we see somebody on the stage and we go, oh, pff, 
well, you know, she got there because of blah, blah, right? Or, well, she, you know, what she's saying is stupid. You know, we end up projecting our judgments onto other people. And, you know, the whole thing with right. the media, we want people to be gods, but we also are just as happy when they fail. We actually look for them to fail because that's a disowned stuff that we've got about success. That is so and, true. You know, and, and, you know, what my curiosity is if I'm judging of other people's successes, how can I ever expect to own my success gracefully exactly. and fully? That right? Is, I yes. can't. Right, you can't. That, that is so true. And I've seen that come up in my own in my own face around seeing people being um, successful or doing things that I wish I could do and judging them and then realizing exactly the same thing, that how can I do that if I'm judging what I want to have myself? Yeah, exactly. And it's, so it's, exactly. Pushing, and it's that, pushing it away. Do you remember at Barbara Brennan, what, <laughs> what very few people know is, many people know the shadow, right? It's like, it's that's the dark part, parts of ourselves we don't want to own. But I right. always loved learning about the golden shadow. And the golden shadow yeah. was the positive things in people we weren't ready to own. And so when we go, oh, let's, let's, let's say I'm really jealous of Oprah, right? Let's say I were to say that. And so I want to judge her and project onto her like blah, 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 blah. <laughs> well, if I go, wait, what's the golden shadow piece of it? Oh, it's because she impacts so many people and she gets to meet an, an amazing amount of interesting people and she gets to travel and she gets, you know, when I own what it is that I want that she has, I can use it to actually propel myself forward ah. as opposed to judge it and shut myself down. Ah, how, that's great. I, I don't know that I've ever heard the golden shadow. That is really ah. powerful. Thank you for that. Oh, good. I'm so <laughs> glad. Yeah, right. It's it's what we don't own that's brilliant inside ourselves that somebody mm. else might be already living. Aha. Uh -huh. Is this a concept that you came up with? No, I actually thought we learned it at school. So oh, okay. No clue where Barbara I Brennan. Learned it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Barbara Brennan. She may have said I was probably I was probably skitzed out then. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, maybe maybe because, like, you weren't ready to own your brilliance yet. Maybe right. you totally skipped on that part. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we all were, right, not ready to own our brilliance at that time. Oh, it was I, uh, it's still tough. It is still tough. And I, I know that I went through those four years out of my body and thinking I was in my body, but I truly was not in my, in my body. And it's taken all these years to really come into my body more fully <laughs> and realize, yeah, you know, that. Yeah, so, I get that. Yeah. I, you know, it's it's. I've talked to a lot of people about this, you know, because there's a way to be spiritual mm -hmm. and be out of our bodies. And I really think that what our evolution is, and I hope that our evolution as human beings is to actually bring spirit into our bodies. And it's hard mm -hmm. because as we come into our bodies, we hit all the traumas, we hit all the forgotten memories, all the repressed memories that we stuffed in there in the first place and didn't want to feel. And so when I talk to my clients, when we talk about embodiment, I always say there's often great periods of discomfort because we have to come into these dark, forgotten places that we've pushed away. But as we move through them and as we sink deeper and deeper into our body, then we start discovering this brilliance that lives in there all the time we just we just it's just protected by our traumas ah it's protected by our traumas how i that is very true that's a good way to put it and uh embodiment for the sake of those listening or or watching rather um how did you how do you explain or define mm -hmm. that uh, nice big question. Um, you know, it's interesting. The word incarnation to me explains it best. You know, carne in Latin is flesh, right? It's meat. So incarnation oh, okay. means to come into the flesh, so into our body. So again, so many of us do not do not live in our bodies. We're often in the world of our minds, right? We're, ah. we're thinking, 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 thinking. Right. Or some of us who are, who are connected spiritually, we live in the spirit world a lot, in fantasies and, right. and visions and this and that. But to actually come into the body, the body holds our feelings. The body holds our memories. And so as we come into the body, we 
it allows us to become more solid and to become more grounded. And to me, it gives me more solidity to actually kind of handle what it means to be human. Because we're not... Mm. We're not here to be just spiritual. We're here to be human. And right. if we're not in our bodies, how can we be human? Right. That is so clear, uh, bringing us down into our bodies to be human because that's why we're here. Thank you for that. Yeah. That makes so much yeah. sense. And I love the uh, in, uh, embodiment being incarnation into flesh, into body, because the, a lot of the defense uh, mechanisms that we've um, that have been created in our lives keep us from being in our bodies, don't they? And would you say that a lot of the how our, a lot of the uh, dysfunction or disease that's in the world today perhaps could stem from being out of the body? Uh, yeah, it's, that's a big question. <laughs> um, I know I, I can only speak for myself and right. for my clients. I right. do. I know that you know. So when we're children and when we experience traumas and and whatever the trauma might be, right? Whether it's it's incest or abuse, or for some people it's a one time one time trauma, but that is so untenable for the child consciousness that he or she leaves her body and so then we live above this body and and to me i think that then we never develop a relationship with the trauma with the body and then this on this forgotten consciousness that you know that we separated from i think turns into disease i know for me i had you know 30 years of an eating disorder because i had all this trauma in my body that I just said, F that, I'm going to cut myself off from that. That is too darn painful. Mm. And so instead, you know, the eating disorder for me, what's interesting is it was an attempt to keep bringing myself back into my body. You know, every time I acted out my eating disorder and I would binge or I would do a bunch of different eating disorder strategies, it was like I was trying to come into my body and then it was so untenable, I would leave my body again. And then I would come into my body and leave again. I couldn't stay in my body. There was too much trauma in there. And it's taken almost 20 years to work with the trauma. And now being in my body is safe. And it's so delicious and pleasurable to be in the body. It's actually very unstable to be out of our body. Right, that's true. So, wow, so um, eating disorders now is something that you focus on in your, in your uh, therapeutic practice, is that correct? You know, it is, it's, it, I entered my practice with eating disorders because it was my journey, right? right. I, so often our wounds end up being the way we can help people. Right. So um, I am known, you know, for working with eating disorders and I'm known for working with very serious eating disorders and that's probably about 40% of my practice. I have, mm-hmm. a, you know, I've shifted into coaching mm-hmm. more and I help people with, you know, I work with couples. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. I love mm-hmm. relationship work. I love, you know, working with women who are at the edge of wanting to take a leap into something new and bigger, mm-hmm. but are scared shitless to do that <laughs> because all our old fears about playing small are holding us back. And I love that. That's like one of my favorite places to be. Yeah. And, uh, and I work with adolescents. I work, I work with a whole bunch of different populations. And for me, it's always soul-based. You know, I don't just work with our thoughts. I work with our soul. I work with embodiment. And, and you know, how can, how can we live this human experience in the most effortless and joyful way? Ah. You know, that's maybe the way that I try to approach my work. Great. And that's right in line with, with where I am with my work as well. And, wow, that's great, Isabel. Thank you Say for Say more about that, Jane. More about what? About where you're at with your work with that. I don't know much about where you're at with oh, your I know. <laughs> that's true. Well, uh, I really am, am in a place of helping women or, or people more closer to my age um, find themselves that be, uh, f- after having a lifetime or living through this life 40 or 50 years with um, their their traumas d- um, buried within them and helping them to see and to uh, let that trauma go and live in their body and find happiness and peace and truth in their lives and live their lives more yeah. fully. I really believe yeah, that we're exactly. all here to do that. And so my practice, I, I work organically with the energy field and with more of a shamanic uh, bend to it now with uh, 
I have drums and rattles and feathers and singing bowls <laughs> and all I kinds of it. tools, and I use my voice. Uh, but um, helping, I really am here to be of service to help uh, human beings find their joy because we all uh, have um, have grown up with these defense mechanisms that keep us from who we truly are. And um, the, we're, we're here to have fun and to enjoy life and to be, as you say, human in this human body, but enjoying it while while we ha while we're here, enjoy the ride, as they say. So that's part. That's well, what my right. yoga practice is about. Yeah. Right, and it's like it's like this constant paradox we have to hold that the Buddha talked about so beautifully. You know, things are impermanent. So to start trusting, to me, you know, I'm 51, and mm -hmm. so it's like I, I'm trusting now that even if I go through a difficult period, whether that period is five minutes a day or six months, that I'm going to come out of it and actually be able to enjoy, embody joy in the next phase and then maybe pain again and then joy. So mm -hmm. I think when we have a, a certain number of years under our belt <laughs> of living on this earth, we start trusting a little bit that things are ever-changing and that when we tighten against either the joy, like, I want to keep it, I want to stay like this, I want to stay like this, or when we tighten against the pain and go, I want this to go away, I want this to go away, that clinging is what actually creates the suffering. So for oh. me, let's say I'm having a moment where there's this really uncomfortable sensations that come into my body, like anger or sorrow or grief, I just, I just watch it, right? Oh, well, this is divine too. Oh, yeah, this is divine too. And yeah. so, and then when joy it comes through my body oh well this is divine too and this will pass too and so I find myself to be more like a container through which what I call life force or divinity whatever we want to call it is constantly moving through me and if I allow it to move through me with just curiosity then it just it's it just keeps flowing nothing I don't cling to any of it and then none of it is actually painful it's actually incredibly interesting right that's very true um yeah life goes in waves doesn't it there's a trough and a crest of the wave and we're all it's constantly moving constantly in motion and so we're always touching those places of of the heightened part and the lower of the of parts of it and um yeah yeah and embracing yeah. all of that now it's i know it's sometimes it's hard to embrace but just knowing in the, when you're in the low part of the of the wave in the trough, just knowing that it's it's going to pass is really yeah, really right. tremendous right. to remember. Yeah, that piece, and then the piece also for me about saying that whatever energies are passing through me, even the most uncomfortable, painful one, are divine. That to me, mm. I think if somebody were to say to me, what's been the thing that's helped you the most and that helps your clients the most, is to love everything that passes through us as mm. divine. Ah. And it's like even the eating disorder, even like all of it. And because then we relate to it you know literally like when i feel this incredible discomfort of an emotion that like i want to run away from if i go well what if that was god what then how would i relate to it and then it's like oh okay well i feel heat in my belly and there's like a lot of energy right there and it's it's like wow it's building up a lot of pressure in my body but if i see it like what if we were to see it that that was god too mm -hmm. do you see how much more excited and curious we could <laughs> get about it and we wouldn't say well that's anger that's bad mm -hmm. the way we were so often taught as children to reject these parts of us as bad Right. That's that's a good point. Uh, it, everything is God. Everything is divine. Everything is um, from the light or the, the divinity or God self. So that's really brilliant what you're saying about um, how you handle it, knowing that those places that you touch into that may be discomfort uh, actually are, are parts of the divine, parts of divinity, parts of God. So that's really yeah. helpful. Thank you. Well, to me, changes. It literally changed my life to do that. And mm. and because we you know this goes back to the concept of daring to be ourselves right. you know like if if we know that like let's say you were told as a child that you couldn't be angry right that girls good girls aren't angry and so whenever anger shows up you you 
tense against it. Again, then what happens is then somehow, some way, because anger is energy, it's going to show up and you're going to either turn it against yourself and hurt yourself with that anger, or you're going to discharge it and, you know, turn it against somebody else and then like, wow, you know, <laughs> hurt somebody with your anger. Right. But if you go, wait, what if I challenge that notion that anger is bad or anger is scary or I shouldn't feel anger and I just welcome it when it comes inside of me, when it mm. moves through me? And what if I see it as divine? Then that, that energy shows up, might expand, might get smaller, and then it moves out. It doesn't end up hurting anybody ah. because you have... You have can you have felt it and you have let it move through just like you've let move through a river. Ah, that's a great concept. Just letting it move through and, and acknowledging it that for what it is, but being okay with yeah. the change. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, because people are so scared of anger, right? But people anger, are scared yeah. of anger because very few people know how to be with an emotion like anger in a healthy way. Anger by itself, there's nothing wrong with it. It's the way people relate to anger that makes it dangerous. Right. That's true. How they look at it when it comes up. It usually when anger comes up, we stuff it right away and wait, and it, and it keeps on keeps on bubbling down there and trying to trying to come up and trying to come up and what you're saying is if you could let it come up and let it be part of the change and flow now when you're doing this um isabel are you probably not in, in connection in a relationship with someone in the moment you're probably doing this when you're in maybe in a in a therapeutic situation or uh, um alone or how how are you doing this What's, hmm. working with so, anger you know i'm <laughs> To me, it took me a, a lot of time, probably years, to, you know, to A, first of all, we have to notice that the energy of anger is arising, and yeah. then because anger, you know, anger is like fire, so mm -hmm. we have to become really skilled attending anger in a way that's healthy. So, you know, oh. for a while, it's a great question. Probably I first started in therapy, then I would walk away, right? If I noticed that energy was starting to rise inside of me, let's say I was with my husband, I'd be like, you know what, I gotta go get a time out. And then I would work with it you know, separately from him. Okay. I'm at the point, I cannot say that this is true all the time because we are human, <laughs> we're imperfect, right. where if I notice it, I might just say, whoa, hold on a second, I'm really feeling angry right now. And because we have the kind of relationship we're really honest, I, I can even name the impulse, like, wow, I really want to push you away right now, you know, I, or I really want to, like, walk away, but let me just try to be with this right now. Be, because in the end, when I walk away, in a sense, I'm not as intimate, right? Because I'm walking away and I'm doing a process by myself and then coming back. Right. I think it's important at certain points of our healing journey. My ideal is to be able to stay in relationship with whoever's triggering me mm -hmm. and be able to work through it while staying in relationship. But dang it, that's really hard to that do. Is, that is so hard to do. <laughs> I mean, I can see where you've probably built that relationship with your husband, whom you've been with for a long time. And he understands, I'm, I'm sure, now that you're, I mean, you're a therapist and a healer, so he's been through a lot of this journey with you. So... Uh, yeah. if, he, if he survived the marriage through that, then I guess he, exactly. yeah, he he's ready. Exactly. He survived Barbara Brennan, right? <laughs> so he can do that. He, the, the four years we went through Barbara right. Brennan, he didn't go through, but no. right, exactly. Well, you did. <laughs> right, you did, and you bring all that home. And so how blessed, right. how blessed is that that you have him now to continue your own process with as far as especially anger, because that's, a, like you said, that's a really, it's a hard one. And when it comes up in relationship with a loved one, with the one you love, yeah, the first thing to, to do is uh, want to walk away or want to leave or, or blow up or not, not to harm the, the right. relationship. But, um, wow, it sounds great the it's way so he's, hard. He, he's able to do it. It's such an addictive energy, you know, and it's it like... And, you know, for a lot of us, you know, we, we feel anger. And, and so even if we go away, then, you know, our mind will keep feeding the anger. It's like adding logs to the fire. Well, and then I can't believe he said this, and then he said that, and he's such a <laughs> jerk. So it's actually one of the things, so probably one of the primary skills that I teach people along with seeing these energies as divine mm. is actually to just work with sensations and not anger itself. So because when you, do, when you look, when you actually break down the energy of anger they're just sensations in the body right it might be heat it might be pressure in your abdomen it might be 
a feeling of, you know, it might even be color for some people. Mm. And so when I go, oh, okay, okay, I'm having a hard time breathing, my chest is constricted, and I just pay attention to what's happening in my body mm-hmm. versus right. going, I'm pissed off, he's such a jerk, you know, like, and you know, the ego mind loves to find all kinds of reasons to keep ourselves angry. So mm. I really encourage myself and my clients to work at the level of sensations, which mm. is, again, we tie it back to embodiment. We have to be able to be yeah. in our bodies to experience sensations. Mm. In our heads are the stories of why we can be angry and why we should hurt somebody else with our anger. That's where the stories live. Ah, okay. Wow, that's amazing. Um, I, I, I was curious about the... Um, I know that anger is addictive and uh, emotions, some, certain emotions and behaviors are, are yeah. addictive. So, <clears throat> yes. me. Um, how, so we're working with a, almost, you could say we're working with an addiction here when working with anger specifically or, or even emotions that are um, triggered that are, that are um, habitual, say. So we yes. can look at them actually as addictions and look, so you're saying looking at, um, looking into our body and feeling the sensation in our body. So look, well, you're, this is helping me understand the, uh, like you said, the um, embracing, embodying of it, which is so, um, it's so foreign, I think, to our Western culture, but is so important yeah. to, to be, start realizing yeah. how you feel. What, what, are you, what are you getting in your body when the anger starts to rise? Because sometimes it, take, if sometimes it takes a, a few seconds to start rising, and at that moment, that if you can realize, uh oh, some anger is coming up, or you can just realize, oh, here comes some feeling, and re- recognize where it's going to go from from past, it it, yeah. it it can help you tremendously to be happier in your life by uh, then working through it in the ways you're talking about. Yeah, and it's and it's again, you know, it's interesting. The the newsletter that I'm actually sending out tomorrow morning is mm. on on the Facebook. I call it the Facebook God, right? And it's the same <laughs> addiction. It's like it's when we look for something to make us feel good. That's this instantaneous feeling good, you know. So whether it is. Uh, if you're a food addict, you know, whether it's that piece of chocolate or if you're an alcoholic, it's that glass of vodka or the Facebook like or whatever it is. It's like these things that make us feel instantly good so that mm. when you discharge your anger at first, it's like, ah, you feel so good for a split second. And then mm. the suffering comes because it, they're not healthy habits. And what I always get really frustrated about is actually healthy or soulful habits often don't feel good at the very beginning. They don't have that instantaneous hit that our painful habits do, but then they feel good because, oh, I managed my anger. I didn't hurt myself or I didn't hurt anybody else with it. Or, oh, I was able not to turn towards binging. Mm. You know, I I went and meditated instead. But I always say painful habits are short-term pleasurable, long-term pain, while healthy, soulful habits are short-term difficult and long-term pleasure wow. and that's uh, if we get that yeah. that's really helpful as, as we keep practicing that oh my god that is so helpful that is tremendous to think of it that way because then in the long term your life your life as it moves forward will have that long-term pleasure that long-term up uh, on the crest of the wave so to speak more than down on the on the trough yeah wow exactly but but that quick hit yeah. You know, I think we're wired biologically for survival mechanism for that quick hit of pleasure. Yeah. So it's really hard to give it up. It's yeah. really hard, you know, like 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 when I used to have my eating disorder and I like get that hit of pleasure when I got on the scale, you know, or when I did have that piece of chocolate. I don't think chocolate is bad. I'm saying for me, let's say it was a binge food. It felt it's like oh there's actually difficult to find soulful uh, habits that feel as good as quickly as that. And again, unfortunately, there's all the painful consequences that come along with it. Right, with the, with the addiction or with, um, you know, with that quick fix, that quick fix that yep. um, is so hard to... Yep. Hard to yep. So uh, is this something yep. you're working toward is coming to, or, or something that you, this is I guess what you do in your practice is help people to uh, look, um, find ways to have that long-term pleasure as opposed to the quick pleasure. 
or the quick fix? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I one of my one of one of my favorite kind of practices is to help people with painful habits, and I have mm-hmm. this this thing called the feel good way. Mm-hmm. And actually, if you look at the way I spell the word good, it's actually good slash God, because what I say is all our, of our habits are on one level, on a superficial level, wanting us to make us feel good, but really on the deepest level, they want to make us feel God. And so, you know, what I help people with is how do we go beyond just feeling good into feeling God? And mm-hmm. as you know, mm-hmm. if that was an easy endeavor, none of us would be struggling with painful habits. So I have a <laughs> lot of compassion for our habits and addictions because they're this brilliant attempt to feel good to feel God but but they I always say to people are you really feeling that in the most effective way possible Mm -hmm. I never call habits bad I just ask about their effectiveness level Mm -hmm. and so you know connecting to God to the God place dang one another hard thing right (laughs) it's 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 quieter. That's why they call God the still small voice. It's quieter. It's less dramatic, and and but it's more sustainable, and it's it's less painful. But it's not easy. It's mm. not easy. It's not easy. But that's that is where we're all striving to go, especially in this awakening, um, this awakening, um, conscious awakening of consciousness era that we seem to be in. People are wanting that, and that's I yeah. think. That's why a lot of people are turning to people like you and me, looking and desiring change so that they can then find that good and that God and that long-term yeah. pleasure and that long-term enjoyment of their life rather than those quick um, quick um, yeah. jolts, jolts of stuff that are probably are not healthy. Yeah, that's right. It's like it's... Uh I love that you say the jolt. It reminds you a little bit of like the lab rats, you know, like when you press a lever and they feel the quick hit of pleasure. Oh, my God. It's, it's like that, you know, oh, the, yeah. the pleasure of the painful right. habit or the right. ego, whatever you want to call that. But it's just then you have to keep getting more and more and more. That's the other problem with painful habits. It's not just that they create painful consequences in the long run, but you never get enough, right? right. Because it's not, it's not really coming from the very core of you. It's coming from an external thing, whether mm-hmm. it's, alcohol or meth or Facebook or whatever it is, it's externally oriented and so you have to keep getting more and more and more and more in order to feel the level of feeling good that you were feeling you know, initially. And that's the other thing with the feeling God inside it's actually, it's always inside of you and it's a matter of learning to turn your attention inward to yourself Mm -hmm. as opposed to outward to these external rewards because those will never actually make you feel good in the long run they never will as much as it almost works but it doesn't right well one thing that i've been um um drawn to that i i was uh, gifted to pay attention to is uh something called busting loose um, but it's connecting in with your god self um on this level of when things when whenever whenever there's any discomfort in your body or in your in your life whatever kind of discomfort it might be is er, er, um immediately um say to yourself um i am the divine uh, say to yourself a positive affirmation of how you are god you i am god so i would say uh say if i did something wrong or if i was depressed say sometimes i do get depressed like we all do (laughs) and um um when i get in those low places i speak to myself and i say i am the divine power and presence of god i am that and i say it in such a way that i feel it and it it dispels it dispels and and depression can be addictive or is addictive and i know i was depressed yeah. for many years too and it, it is another addictive <clears throat> actually behavior or belief i don't know how, i don't know if it's a behavior or belief or what it is but it, it's an energetic holding that um for me, I've been able to pull myself out of it um, moment to moment by acknowledging in a, in a way that may be same, similar to you but or different, but uh, by saying to myself that I am God, and if I'm alone in my home because I live alone, I might exp- I may just have such expression of it that I am God and really tell God and tell myself that uh, we are one. We are one. Yeah. I am one with you and you are one with me. I am divine presence. I am the source energy creating whatever the dev- whatever the depression is or creating uh, because i i believe that because we are god we are our own creators that we are in, on some level in some way maybe not a conscious way we are creating our reality 
How do you tie yeah, into that? I, I, did you, are you talking about the, the, the busting loose from your money game or something like that? Is that the book you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, that's the book. But I've translated it into helping me when, with everything. <laughs> Exactly. You know, it's funny. Actually, I just read the book a uh, few weeks ago, and I, so I feel the same way. I feel like I took what it was trying to, to teach me, you know, that this is all our creation, and, and, and I have also turned it around to how, you know, what I loved about the book was that, we've, you know, his belief is that we come into the earth to, pr- you know, we create this hologram that creates the exact opposite of who we are. Right. And so right. to experience what that's like, and that's what's been helpful to me as I've gone into this expansion with creating this podcast and this mm. Dare to Be You branding is uh-huh. when I go into my fear, like, oh my God, I suck, right? Or like, <laughs> nobody likes me, or I'm crazy to be doing that. I just turn that around and I go, oh yeah, I was practicing experiencing what it's like to think I suck, <laughs> right? Or to think I am finite, or to think that everything will fall apart. And you know what? Okay, now I want to have fun, and I experience the opposite. I want experiencing. I want experiencing. You know, being successful or feeling like I am fully uh, a divine being. So mm-hmm. it, it it's actually found the book to be really fun to play with as it well, is. Jane. Oh, so yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> it is. It's a great book to play with and to and to take out of it what you what you will and whatever practices can help you in your life. I think every book that we read, we, there's some parts we like, some parts we don't, but it's all a learning experience to help us grow and help us be more of who we truly are and enjoy life and um, be our truth, be our authentic true selves in life. Yeah, so, exactly. And it's a, and it's a journey and yes, it's a practice it and, is. and, uh, you know, my hope for all of us. And I know that I find that for myself these days is that again, that we react less and less to life because mm-hmm. we kind of trust that everything that comes into our life is just exactly what needs to be coming into our life at that point, whether it's a hit of anger or whether it's depression or whether it's, you know, somebody saying, I don't want to work with you anymore or, you know, whatever it is. You know, last year I experienced the death of my mom, which we were Mm. expecting, but eight days later, my favorite brother, you know, in the whole world, one of my favorite people in the whole world died eight days after her. And it's like, you know, I can look at that and go, well, life sucks, you know, and sometimes I feel that. Or I can say, okay, what, what, what have I taken from the, this last year since he's passed on has been so rich and it's deepened me into my connection with the spirit world and mm-hmm. into trusting. So, so you yeah. know, again, it's like, what, how do we view what shows up in our life? Do we view it with the exactly. eyes of optimism and faith? and light or do we view it as well life sucks and it only brings me obstacles and and to me that's a lot of what makes us lead a a happy life or not is the Uh, way we react to what is constantly showing uh, up yes i totally agree with all of that i totally agree but how it's how we react and how we take it in and the processes that that you're teaching and that i'm teaching that we we're, we're helping our clients with is really helping them to do precisely that of um make choices and how they react to life situations that can be yeah. they can be devastating uh, and, and they are naturally devastating many times I'm, I'm sorry to hear that your mother passed and so your brother too and it's difficult to go through but by the same token you've you've found a way to have that be an amazing amazing um growth experience yes. for yourself yeah yeah exactly yeah. And that's it, right? To me, that's it. When, I, when you look around at people who seem to be more joyful than others, it's not because they had an easier life. It's no. because of how they interpreted right. what life brought to them. I think that's it. I, I think, think that's the big secret as we, because I have to get going after this, but like, like, don't you think, Jane, maybe, maybe we make this really simple at the end and we go, <laughs> yeah, it's the way you choose to put meaning mm-hmm. onto events that makes us be have a joyful life or not i think you're right on there yeah it's the choices we make i talk about on the show a lot the choices we make help us be happy or sad and, ha- and however yeah. we choose to look at the circumstances or what happens in our lives moment to moment well yeah, isabel exactly. this has been such a pleasure talking with you and, and i hope um that your new branding fl- flies i think it is going to fly because i love your website i hope people go there that's isabeltyranny.com to check out what you're doing and your 
podcast and your ebooks and your newsletter. So thank you so well, much for joining you. us. Thank you. Yeah, and, and if people want to listen to the podcast, it's you can go to it too by remembering dare to be you podcast.com and that will ah. lead you right to my website. And uh, next week, next Friday, I did my first male interview with this yoga teacher who's a Harley Davidson biker <laughs> dude who just doesn't fit in the mold of yoga teacher and has in, <laughs> and has not only embraced that role but actually created this thing called outlaw yoga oh my that, God. that's about l- doing yoga for everybody for every shape every side for harley loving people it's <laughs> he, it's a really cool interview so ah. dare to be you podcast.com and um and you can sign up and receive you know information about when the podcast will be there ah. jane i really enjoyed it you know it's funny because i've been on the other side doing my podcast of being the interviewer yeah, and it was yeah. just so fun to be yeah. with you and to just have this conversation with you so thank Thank you for having um, me here. I'm uh, so grateful. You're very welcome, Isabel. So grateful to have you, and all the best. And hope I talk to you again soon. Have a great afternoon. Me too. I look uh, forward to it. Okay. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Bye. Oh, have a gong on that one. <laughs> oh, thank you, Isabel Tierney. What an amazing being she is, and the work she's doing is so so uplifting and helpful to all of us and to all the people that she's serving out there in uh, in the Boulder, Colorado area, but internationally. <sighs> she serves the international community with her podcasts and her ebooks, and I'm sure she works from a distance as well. So that was quite enlightening to hear the perspective from Isabel of how she handles uh, addictions and how she handles anger in particular and um, when she was talking about anger I know we all do have anger so um, um, okay want me to take that hello you're on the air Hi, Jane. yes this is Jane can I help you yeah, this is Flo. Flo how are you welcome I got your um, <laughs> Facebook the other the other day so thank you for checking in with me how's things going what can I do for you today Flo uh, I'm upset because everybody's thinking there's a divine God and uh, I wouldn't even attempt that ah uh, so so you're not in that space of a divine God well I am not God <laughs> oh I see and uh, you know there's always controversy over that uh-huh. but I never dare claim that I am God. Well, well, uh, that is something to be discussed, isn't it? Because my, um, the more, the longer I'm on the planet, the more I'm understanding that um, God is everything and everywhere. And if God is everything and everywhere, then God must be in me. And not, oh, of course, He's y- in you. Yeah, but I you see. are not Him. Well, no, I am not Him, but He, but He is me. <laughs> So how do you differentiate that? Uh, he is you. Well, he created you, yeah. Uh-huh. And, uh, you're, you know, on earth. Right. But never claim to be... I don't claim to... I God, don't claim... God himself, you right. can't be. Right. Uh, I am not the and divine as creator. as far no. as uh, that woman that called, I don't know, she's a little bit off the wall. And... Um, She's way out there. Well, she's we're we're on a different planet probably than you, Flo, because we have um, we've come to believe that um, God wants God brought uh, Jesus came to this planet uh, was born to show us human beings that He is God and we are as Him. We are the same as Him, as He speaks of in the Bible. That um, these things you shall do also, as as far as everything that He did. We he, were created he, in His image. Uh, yes, we, that, yes. Oh. But that's all. Well, that image... Can- anyway, I wanted to... Uh, I, you got a hold of Ginger, you said? Uh, yeah, I'm going to be getting... I did get a hold of her. I didn't um, actually call her yet because my, my schedule's been busy. So that's uh, something that I'm mo- moving toward. And I thank you for asking me to do that because I will be um, inviting Ginger to be on the show. Uh, mm-hmm. She's very informative. Yes, she is. She's been there for years. I've known her from way back. Right, right. And uh, she'll probably give you a few hints herself 
when right. she, you know, if she does go on. Absolutely, but I'm looking forward to it. do so, I don't know Yeah. if she would or not. Okay, well, I appreciate that confidence in her flow, and I will follow through with that. So thank you for your okay, call. Okay, but I just wanted to clear that up because I'm very clear uh, as far as um, God goes. Yeah. And I'm a 4 C or so. Ah. I wouldn't even dare attempt insulting God that way. Okay. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate you calling in to say that. Okay, kid. You take care. You as well. Be well, Flo. Bye. Uh, you too, hon. Thanks for the call. Okay. So um, thank you for that call, Flo. And Flo is getting a uh, feeling that I was saying or that uh, Isabel was saying that we are God and I guess there's a fine line there that we need to talk about or, or get more in touch with as far as um, I'm, I, or we, I believe that we are um, of God, but I guess um, it's, uh, it's something that's very esoteric that needs to be discussed further, I guess, and I can't do it in the next two minutes. So thank you for that call flow, but it will open the discussion, certainly, certainly open the discussion for that. And um, one, of, one of the things that I did get out of Isabel's call, well, it was very informative for me, was her take on how to um, alleviate anger, or not alleviate it, but how to work with anger and uh, destructive emotions that might come up and destructive feelings, or what we might perceive as destructive or tough, hard emotions and feelings, and um, how to begin to become aware when you have uh, a strong emotion arising in you especially when you're in relationship with another person if a person speaks to you and says something that triggers something inside of you begin to become aware of where in your body are you feeling it and like Isabel said embody what if you were to embody that or how does how do you feel that in your body where in your body do you feel it where in your body do you have any discomfort so, say or do, does your stomach get a little queasy or um, do you all of a sudden get a, uh, something going on somewhere in your body? Pay attention to that. And the next time uh, that happens, <clears throat> or actually not the next time, but just pay attention to that and begin to become aware of the sensations in your body that you then can work with on a, a more energetic level to help you to, <clears throat> pardon me, to handle, or not to handle, but to heal and to be able to move through and f allow those feelings and those emotions like anger to move through you without flaring them up, without throwing wood on the fire, so to speak, um, without flaring up the fire even worse, but acknowledging it rather than stuffing it down and pushing it down, acknowledging it. So this was a very informative uh, time with Isabel. Thank you. And again, her website is Isabel Tierney, T-E-I-E-R-N-E-Y dot -E -E com, or she, as she said, you can go to her her podcast, dare to be you podcast dot com, dare to be you podcast dot com, to get this information. As she said, her new her podcast uh, next week will be of a, a yoga Harley Davidson teacher, <laughs> a yoga teacher who is a a bikey, a bikey. That sounds like an oxymoron. So, um, <clears throat> thank you so much for being with me today. I hope you received what you needed out of this, and uh, till next week. Remember, your heart knows the way. Thank you.